Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. I actually had a plan today to make a video on how to analyze a property and my good friend Adriana reached out to me and said, hey Darren, I'm actually looking to analyze a six unit building. And I thought what a perfect opportunity for us to run through it together and uh, look at the numbers and try to figure out what the value of this building is going to be. The sellers uh, have basically provided the, the rents and the expenses. And so we can reverse engineer this to figure out what the offer price should be on this building. So Adriana, thanks for jumping in here last minute and, uh, and joining me. And I can't wait to analyze this property. And hopefully this will be something that's really great for other people to learn how we analyze commercial buildings because residential is one sector. But when you're analyzing commercial buildings, there's a lot of things that people aren't aware of. So we're gonna run through this deal together. Uh, you're going to tell me all the numbers. We're going to input it into the software that I use um, to analyze my deals. And then hopefully at the end, we'll have a, a price that, that makes sense for you and then on this investment. So first of all, amazing to have you as a resource uh, as we're analyzing properties, be able to give you a call. So thanks for doing this. Hmm. And yeah, hopefully we can also help others uh, in analyzing these properties. Well, let's jump right in. Uh, let's, uh, let's go. I'm going to share my screen because, um, I use a software called deal check. Um, I've, I've been looking at a lot of different softwares over the years. Uh, but I find deal check is one of the most robust and I really like the options that it gives us. So for those of you that aren't familiar with deal check, um, the reason that I really like this software and I can leave a, a link in the description below, um, for deal check, for those of you that have never seen it. I like deal check because it gives us a couple of options when we're analyzing properties. We can do just straight up rentals. We can do burrs, so buy, renovate, refinance, rent, repeat. We can do flips and we can do wholesale properties. So um, I'm assuming let's run this as just a straight up rental, right? Just like, let's look, analyze it as is right now. We're not gonna try to do any improvements on it. We're just gonna look at it, whether it makes sense as a rental. So I'm gonna go into deal check. Uh, I'm going to uh, add a property up here. So I've got three options here. Uh, we're going to run a new property manually. Okay. So what the property, we're going to just come up with a name for it. So what do you, what do you want to call this property? Queen Street. Okay. Um, short description. We're going to skip over some of these things. All right. Unit composition. So we're going to go and actually edit these unit compositions because these are going to be um, helpful later on. So let's add each individual unit. So what is the first unit on there? So unit one is mm -hmm. a one bedroom. Okay. So we're going to call it one bedroom. Um, and how, well, it's got one bedroom, obviously. <laughs> how many bathrooms? One bathroom as well. So they're all one bathroom. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Do you know the square footage of it? I don't know. Okay. That's right. And what's the rent on it? The rent on it is 1,041. 1,041. Okay. So we add that. All right. Next one. Next one is also one bedroom. Okay. And we're looking at a rent of 877. Okay. Um, 877. And last one is a two bedroom. Oh, shaking it up. <laughs> and that's at 1995. Okay. Now, if we had square footage, that would be helpful because if it's going to, the software is going to break down the, co the cost per square foot and everything like that. But for now, this is fine. So after we enter those, we go back to the worksheet. So now we've got the six units in here. Um, it's going to populate that later. So we go to our next section. So now what's the, well, we don't know the purchase price yet. We're going to come back to the purchase price and we're just doing a rental. So we don't need the after repair value financing. So let's assume we're going to finance this property. Um, commercial financing is generally what percentage down payment? Um, 75%. Yeah. So down payment's usually 25% and the loan to value is yeah, 75% LTV. So let's keep the interest rate at, um, 3 percent is a little high, but let's keep it there for now. 25 year amortization. We can always come back and change these things later. There's no, um, mortgage insurance on this one and we're not going to finance any rehab costs right now. So let's go to the purchase costs because this will be something this is uh, a little bit different on the commercial side than it is on the residential side. And I've pre-populated these categories in my version of deal check, but you can uh, change any, things, any of these things out. So home inspection, how much are we going to pay for a home inspection on a commercial property? Do you know? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Okay, that's okay. So a standard home inspection in the city of Toronto would be around 
$500, I would say for a, for a residential appraisal, that would be like just a straight up single family home. Mm -hmm. This is six units. So it's not going to be 500 per unit, but you can probably guarantee that it's going to be about $2,000 for an inspection on this property. So uh, we're going to put in a $2,000 home inspection appraisal. Appraisal is different on commercial buildings than it is on residential buildings as well. So a standard appraisal on a regular house might be around $300. Well, on an appraisal on a commercial building, you're looking at at least probably $1,500 to $2,000 for the appraisal. So let's put in another $2,000 here. Uh, something that's also unique to commercial properties is uh, often we have to pay a broker fee and a lender fee. So in residential financing, um, there, the, you can work with a mortgage broker, but the bank pays the broker their fee, right? On a commercial transaction, um, brokers often have a lender fee because of their applications are much more robust and the lenders also charge a lender fee as well. So let's use one and one here. So we're going to put in 1% of the loan value is going to be the broker fee and 1% of the loan value is going to be the lender fee as well. So we're paying 2% total, but one's going to the mortgage broker. One's actually going to be a lender. So Darren, just so I, I know, is this upfront? Yeah, so you can change this in deal check, which I love, right? You can see where it says pay up front. Now I can modify this and I can be, sometimes they will wrap it into the loan. You can see here, it says wrap it into the loan. But in this case, usually these are, um, in fact, usually the lender fee is um, held from the advance. So if the mortgage was 1.5 million and the lender fee was uh, $15,000, they would advance 1.5 million less their lender fee. Does that make sense? Got it. So you just yeah. have to have more cash to put to more for cash the down to close. payment. That's okay. right. But you need to have it ready to go on, on closing, right? So the other thing that commercial lenders often want to see is an environmental inspection. So they want to do what's called an, an ESA inspection. So this is something that um, you know they're going to look at the area and say, have there been any um, gas stations in the area? Was there an oil tank on the site? Um, are they close to a dry cleaner? Like all of these things can contaminate the soil, they can contaminate the building. So this is something that's above and beyond what we have to do on the residential side, but on the commercial side, we have to have an environmental inspection as well. So these are going to run around $3,000 um, in the city of Toronto. So let's put that in there as well. Legal fees. Um, are again, a little bit more expensive on the commercial side. So a standard legal fee might be around $1,500 to close a residential transaction. Uh, we're probably gonna be looking at at least, uh, at least 3,500 for a transaction of this nature. So we're gonna put in $3,500. And these are things that you can find out from your lawyers. You can call them and ask them, you know, uh, what, what's it gonna cost me to, to get to the legals done on something like this. Land transfer tax. Um, this one is um, pretty easy to calculate and rate hub is the one that I use. Uh, it's really good. So we don't know the asking price here yet. Um, let's assume we're somewhere in the $2 million range. Uh, is that 2 million? Yeah, there we go. So we're going to pay double land transfer tax because it's city of Toronto. So we're going to pay the provincial tax and the municipal tax. So that's 72,950. We're going to go back to deal check. And we're 72,950. Now, are you going to bring in any partners on this, Adriana? Like, are you planning to bring in investors, and raise capital? Yes. Okay. So, and that's the, if that's the case, you're going to need a legal partnership agreement, a joint venture agreement, a shareholders agreement, um, a GP, LP agreement, whatever that is. Um, this is going to run probably anywhere between 2,500 and uh, $5,500. So let's say $3,500 for the partnership legal fees. And there's one more thing that I forgot on here. I'm gonna add it. So if I forget a category, I'm just gonna go up here and press add. And I'm gonna call this title insurance because this is something that people, people often forget about. On a residential home, $300,000 house, you're gonna pay like $150 for title insurance. On a $3 million building or $2 million building, you're gonna pay about $1,500, right? So you, that's another line item that you have to remember there. So now we have our 
um, total. And we're going to go back to our worksheet. So these are our purchase costs. So these are our acquisition costs loan for this building. That's right. And we haven't even included the down payment yet because we haven't implemented the, the purchase price yet, right? So we're not doing any rehab costs as of right now. So I'm just going to go to the next section. So our gross rent is $8,000 per month. Vacancy, we always want to include vacancy. I'm going to drop this down a little bit because in the city of Toronto, the vacancy rate is under probably 2%. So let's use 3% as a minimum. Um, I like to use a little bit higher number, but that's okay. Other income could be, uh, is there any other income on this building? Is there like laundry or is there parking? I know we said there's no parking, but is there laundry on the building? I don't see it here. Okay, that's all right. So we're gonna leave no other income. Operating expenses. So this we definitely wanna itemize. You'll see the software defaults to 50% of the revenue is the operating expenses, but I like to itemize this because I really want to know what's happening. So let's turn itemization on and now we can go through. So what are the property taxes, Adriana? So property tax is 4,700. Okay. And this is per year. Yeah. Insurance. Insurance. We're at 3,000. 3,000. Okay. Property management. So did, there is no amount here. What would you suggest to put on something like this? Interesting that they don't put it in, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like something that they're like, yeah, 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 we manage the property ourselves, but we still have to account for it, right? Because we want to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. So I don't want to analyze a building. Even if I am going to manage the property myself, I don't want to analyze it without it in there because if I ever want to hire a property manager or somebody else is going to be... Um, you know, taking over this in the future, something like that. We want to make sure we analyze it in there. So uh, let's put it at 8% city of Toronto. You can generally get uh, property management, at, you know, a little around uh, anywhere between eight and 10%. Maintenance. Now this is another category that a lot of people forget about. Um, on an older building, I would say 5% uh, is a good starting point. Uh, so let's drop this down to 5%. And this would be things that come up, you know, whether there's appliances that need to be replaced or um, small repairs around the building, but there's going to be maintenance on a building like this. Capital expenditures. Um, this is, you know, improvements, things like that. I can, I generally combine these two things together. So you could put maintenance at three and capital expenditures at two, but let's just eliminate capital expenditures HOA fees we don't have here. These are uh, condo fees basically because this is not a condo. Utilities, what do we have in utilities? Yes, about 4,000. Um, are they separated out between so, like- So they, they, they do have separate hydrometers. Every unit is plus hydro. However, they are counting here hydro for common areas. Okay, so let's do, let's, is there any other utilities like water, right. sewer, garbage? Yes, we have water and waste, we have gas, and then we have hydro for common areas. Okay, so let's separate out all three. Let's not combine them. Okay, so let's call this one, um, let's call it hydro. Okay, so what is that one? So we're looking at about $1,000 for per the year? year. Yeah. Okay, per year, good to go. Okay, let's add a couple more. So let's go, what's the next one, gas? Gas, yeah. Yeah. And we're at 2700 for the year. I'm guessing that's a central furnace or something like that, right? That's right. And then you said there was one more, right? And then we have water and waste, and that's okay. at about 2500 for the year. Okay. This is garbage, too, in the city of Toronto, 2500 per year. Okay. So we want to just verify these per year, per year. Percentage of rent, percentage of rent per year, per month. Uh, what about landscape? Is there going to be any snow removal or landscaping on this property? So not that they have mentioned here. I'm sure you would need some snow removal. Uh, there's no grass area, so I don't think landscape would be necessary. Okay, so let's call it, let's call it uh, 150 a month in the winter. And we're going to call that four months. So let's add at least... Um, $600 for the year. Okay. So now we have our operating expenses. Um, we're going to go back to the worksheet. So let's go to the next section here. Appreciation. Um, we're going to keep at 3%. That's pretty much in line with inflation. 
the income increase, what is the average income increase? Um, Cause Ontario has landlord um, tenant laws that only allow us to increase by the rate of inflation. Is this accurate? You think 2% is good for that? Uh, it seems high. It is a little bit. Uh, it's been up, uh, it's been like 1.5 on average for the last couple of years, but let's, let's keep it at two. This year's zero because we can't do rent increases this year, but we'll keep it at, at, um, at the 2%. The expenses will most likely increase at at least 2%. And if we ever wanted to sell this building, um, we've got selling costs of 5% plus HST. So we're gonna keep that at 6% there. Uh, the land value, we don't know. And so we're gonna save this property. So it's not giving us any cap rate, cash on cash return because we don't have a purchase price in there yet. But now what we can do is we can reverse engineer this, right? So we can actually, uh, I'm going to skip forward one step. Actually, we don't even need to. See here, we've got the net operating income. That's 5533. And this is how we calculate the value of a building on the commercial side, right? Okay, so take 5533 and multiply that by 12 months. Okay. What's that number that you get? 66,396. Okay. So now 66,396 is your NOI. That's your net operating income for the year. Now, what I do to figure out the value of the building is I take the net operating income and I divide that by the cap rate. And the cap rate is a percentage. And I know you're gonna ask me, how do I know the cap rate? <laughs> Uh, you have to do a little bit of searching. There's uh, CMHC has uh, some resources, um, but I know we're with working in Toronto, the cap rate, uh, a conservative cap rate uh, that you can use is around 4%. Let's keep it super simple. So, so that take, is what, that is the information I got. Okay. So let's take the 66,396, divide that by 0 0.04, because that's 4%, right? And that's going to tell us that the building is worth 1.659900, right? So that's the value of the building based on the net operating income. Now, they might be asking $2 million for this building, but we know that based on the expenses and based on the revenue, this building in the city of Toronto is only trading at about $1.65 million or $1.66 million. So let's go back and add that and see what it does to the numbers, okay? So now we can go back in. Let's say we're gonna go 1659900 after a pair value is gonna be the same, go to the back to the property analysis. So now it starts to calculate things, right? We see the cap rate is 4%, which is what we see. Our cash on cash return, not great, minus 0.8%. And our monthly cash flow is $370 in the hole, right? So the, now it's gonna populate everything else. So it's gonna say the purchase price is 1.659. The amount financed is that 75% LTV. The down payment is 414,000. And those purchase costs, remember that we were unsure of what the purchase costs were before, but now it's got the down payment and all those other additional costs. We're looking at $528,000 to close on this property. That's what we need in cash to be able to close on the property. And now we look at our gross rent, our vacancy, our operating income, our operating expenses, our net operating income, and our loan payments are gonna be $5,900 a month, which then brings our cash flow to 300 minus $370. Now, what we can do is we can play with the numbers a little bit. I don't wanna play with the numbers to make it work. I wanna just look at one thing and that is the mortgage amount, right? Because what if we could put 25% down, but the mortgage rates right now are around 2%. Would you agree with that? Yes. So let's say we went 2% and we amortize it over 30 years, which we can do that on a commercial loan. And now let's go up and do the property analysis and see how that changes. That changes a lot, mm -hmm. right? So now we're cash flowing $932 a month on this building. So it's $155 per unit. Um, so now it's a viable investment, right? 
So we really have to know from our mortgage brokers what we would be able to get in terms of financing on this property. But at least now we have a better idea of what we'd be looking at. Now I want to change one more thing and we're going to look at how that affects things. What if the sellers want $2 million for this property? What does that do to our numbers? So even at the lower rate interest rate, we would still be net negative cash flow, right? Because we got a $2 million. It also brings our cash that we need to bring to the table at $618,000 because now it's a, a $2 million purchase. Um, but essentially we're, we're cash flow neutral here. At 1.695, the property makes sense, right? Or whatever that, that number was before. But if they want $2 million for this, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I think that's why you would obviously need to do more due diligence on the lending element of this to see if this is actually a viable transaction. I want to do one more thing before we, before we wrap up. And that is look at um, what the cap rate is if they were asking $2 million based on their, well, we actually know it. <laughs> see what it's done here? Based on the, we, they are saying that the building is a four cap, right? Yes. But we know that if they're asking $2 million and we've uh, run our numbers the way that we run them, we're telling them that they're actually uh, trying to sell this at a 3.3 cap. And so we're, we're basically saying to them, look, you know, average Toronto um, commercial buildings are trading at around a four cap. Why are, why are you expecting to sell this at a 3.3 cap when clearly this is not a 3.3 cap building? So great negotiating for us to be able to go in and say, okay, you need to adjust your purchase price or we just walk and, and move on to the next property. The other thing I didn't show you, Adriana, is we can now hit buy and hold projections and it's going to show us, I remember those 3%, 2%, 2% selling costs. Now it's going to break that down. Um, so it's going to show us, you know, we, we do start to get into cash flow in, in, you know, it's broken down into year two, three, four, five. We can set these parameters too. So it's only negative cash flow in year one, right? In year two, we make 1100 in year three, it breaks it down. Um, and now we can start to look at if we were going to bring investors in, what their return on investment would be. So let's go to year five here. This is the year five column. Um, and you're looking at um, a return on investment at 43%, but we break that out over five years and it's less than, you know, it's 8.6% per year. If you're dividing that between you and your joint venture partners, you're making a 4.3% return on an annual basis. I don't think anybody's gonna get terribly excited about a 4.3% return. But again, this is just used as uh, ammunition to go back to the sellers and say, look, you're a little out of whack here on your, on your pricing. So you can either adjust your pricing or we have to look at another deal, which is why I love this software because you could use this to go into negotiations and say, here's how we run our numbers. And if this makes sense to you, you know, here's why we think the price should be 1.695. That's awesome. Yeah, amazing. Well, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed the session with uh, Adriana and, I and breaking down a deal on a commercial building. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for deal check if you guys wanna download that software. There is a free version, there's also a paid version. Uh, Adriana, thanks so much for jumping in with me last minute here and analyzing the property. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the session that we did today, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.